Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Dave's Math Channel. I'm your host, David Tear. Uh, this is my uh, third video in a series on number theory. Today, I'm going to talk about the extended Euclidean algorithm. Um, I, in the last video, I talked about the, the just the regular Euclidean algorithm, just known as the Euclidean algorithm. And I think I explained in that video that the Euclidean algorithm is an algorithm for computing the greatest common divisor or GCD, if you like, of two integers, two given integers. Well, the extended Euclidean algorithm also does this, but it does a little bit more. Um, so what it does is, uh, here, here's a, here's kind of an outline. This is pseudocode for the extended Euclidean algorithm. I'll explain this in a few minutes, but let's just first look at uh, what it gives you. So the input, the input is two integers, A and B. We want to compute the extended Euclidean, the extended GCD, sometimes you call this, of A and B. We already know the GCD, the greatest common divisor of A and B, is this number we call D. That's just, the, like it says, the greatest common divisor. It's the, great, the largest positive integer that's a, a common divisor of both A and B. That's all that is. And what's nice is that it turns out that for any integers, any po two positive integers, A and B, uh, you can always write the uh, uh, GCD, which we call D of A and B. We can always write it as a linear combination, uh, AX plus BY, where X and Y are both integers. Kind of a nice property of the GCD. So not only do we want to get D, but we want to get these two other integers, uh, X and Y. So it's an AX plus BY equals D. Uh, one thing you should note here is that X and Y are not unique. I mean, the, the algorithm will give us unique values of X and Y, but we can, we can find other values of X and Y for which this works pretty easily. But it's enough just to get one pair X comma Y. So anyway, let's just go through this algorithm to see what it's doing. Um, I guess this looks a little bit foreboding. Don't, don't worry about it too much. So here's how it works. Uh, um, so we start with... Uh, with A and B, and we, we set some new variables, which we call D0. So we initialize D0 to be equal to A. I think in the last video, I called these R, R0 and R1, but now we're calling them D0 and D1. I mean, the name doesn't really matter that much. So D0 is just A and D1 is B. Um, and then we, we also initialize these uh, variables X0. So we say X0 is one, Y0 is zero x1 is 0 and y1 is 1. What we're going to be doing here, so that's our initialization. But now we're going to we're going to um, compute new values of these uh, sequences d sub i, x sub i and y sub i. And the way, way we do that is we do uh, what's called a recurrence. Uh, so we do this loop and this loop is is uh, really just a recurrence. Uh, so uh, what we're doing here is the first thing we do. We're, and we're doing this as long as our last uh, remainder, d sub 1. I guess they're re renaming the variables here. I don't really like how they do that. But uh, so we, we d1 is right now equal to b. But d, d1 keeps getting updated each time we go through this loop. So they're saying while d1 is not equal to 0, eventually d1 will be 0 because d1 is just the remainder. When I remember, I, I, I when I in the last video when I was talking about the regular Euclidean algorithm, you keep computing remainders upon division. Eventually, you're going to get a remainder of zero. That's all this d1 is. It's just the remainder, and eventually it will be zero. So that means you will get out of this while loop eventually. So here's what we're doing in the while loop. First thing we're doing is we're computing the quotient uh, d0 over d1, and this uh, funny bracket is called the floor. So we're not actually computing the the quotient because this might not be an integer, but we're computing the uh, what's called the the uh, floor, which is the greatest integer that's less than or equal to this ratio, d zero over d one. That's always an integer. So q is just the integer part of d zero over d one, and then uh, we set d two equal to d one, uh, and we set x two equal x one and y two equal y one. This is this kind of a recurrence we're doing. We're, we're changing the names of our variables. Uh, we're updating the indices. And then we set D1. We have to update D1. So the way we do this is really the recurrence. And like I said, I don't really like how they keep uh, updating the indices here. There's different ways you can write down uh, 
variant roles. I don't really like the way they're doing it here. But uh, basically what they're doing is, this is recurrence. So we take D0 minus Q times D1, and that's going to be our new D1. Uh, uh, if you like, our new, our new uh, 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 step towards getting the GCD. We kind of did this already. This this step is really just part of the regular filling out. But, but notice that we're doing the same thing. We're using the same recurrence with our sequences of x's and y. So we do the same thing for x1. We set x1 equal to x0 minus qx1 and y1 equal to y0 minus qy1. So we're basically doing the same thing with x and y. And remember, x and y are just keeping track of the linear combinations. So that's why we need these things. So this is the extra. Is that what we're doing at x and y is kind of the extra baggage that we've added on to the extended Euclidean algorithm. And then uh, when we're done with all this, we set d0 equal to d2. This is just renaming the variables x0, x0, x2, y0, y2. And we keep doing this loop. So basically, we keep extending these sequences until we get a remainder of 0. And once we've got a remainder of 0, it turns out that x0 is going to be the x we want. And y0 is going to be the y we want. So finally, we just output d0, x0, y0, this triple. And it turns out that that is going to be the extended um, GCD, the way I've defined it. So I know that's kind of a lot. But, but basically, we're just keeping track of the linear combinations. And uh, I think it's probably good to do some examples. Uh, so here's a pretty simple example. Suppose we want to compute the uh, extended... Uh, GCD of uh, 133 and 99. So A is 133, B is 99. So let's just go through this algorithm. I think this would be a little clearer the way it's written here. So uh, we have this table. Look at the table on the right. We start with R0, our, our if you like. Uh, R0 is 133. U0 is 1. V0 is 0. Uh, but then our R1, that's our B, that's 99. Our u1 is 0, and our v1 is 1. This is always true. So the way we're always initializing the sequences of u's and v's is we always said u0 equal to 1, u1 equal to 0, v1 equal to 0, and v1 equal to 1. That's what we always do. And then uh, the first thing we do here is we compute the first quotient. So we divide 133 by 99. That gives us a quotient of 1. So we write 1 in the column of the q sub i. So q1 is 1. That's the first quotient. And now we do the recursion. So uh, to get the next uh, value of r, we take uh, 133, r0, our, our and then we subtract q1 times r1, which is 1 times 99 or 99. So 133 minus 99 gives us 34. That's our new uh, value of r, or r2, if you like. Um, and remember, this was just part of the regular Euclidean algorithm we were doing before. But now the extra we do is we update the U's and V's in the same way that we updated the R's. So our U2 is going to be uh, our U1, which is 1, minus Q1 times U1, which is 1 times 0, 0. So we just get 1 minus 0 equals 1. And then we do the same thing for V1, V2. So our V2 is going to be V0, which is 0 minus q1 times v1, which is 1 times 1, or 1. So we're going to get 0 minus 1, which is negative 1, minus 1. And then um, and then we just do as we did before. So now we're, we have to calculate the next quotient. So uh, remember, our, our, uh, our 1 was 99, our r2 is 34. So we divide. 99 is 2 times 34. Our new quotient is 2. We put that on the right. 2 times 34, the remainder is going to be 31. That's why we write R3 is 31. Notice that there's a 31 below the 34 in the first column. And then uh, we do the same thing for the U's and V's. Uh, uh, our U3 uh, is going to be our U2, our U1, which was 0, minus 2 times 1. That's going to give you negative 2. Uh, and then our V3 is going to be our V1, which is 1 minus uh, q2 times v1, uh, q2 times v2, which is 2 times minus 1. We're subtracting minus 2. That's going to give us 3. And then uh, we keep going like we did before. Uh, so now we have to calculate the next quotient. 
So we, we divide 34 by 31. That gives a quotient of 1. So we've got the 1 on uh, for Q3. And then we calculate the remainder, which is 3. That becomes our, our 4. We're almost done. Just bear with me for another minute here. So now uh, we, we uh, have to do that. Like U4 and V4. We do it the same way we did before. Uh, U4 is U2 minus uh, Q3 times U3. That's going to be 1 minus 1 times minus 2, or 1 plus 2. That's 3. And then our V3 is going to, our V4 is going to be negative 1 minus 1 times 3. That's going to be minus 4. And then uh, we do another uh, another remainder. So I'll look at the last line here. Uh, we divide 31 by 3. 31 is 10 times 3. Our new quotient is going to be 10. So we have 10 times 3 plus 1. So our new uh, remainder is 1. That goes below the 3. So now just one more time. Um, so now we have uh, um, uh, we have to get our new uh, U sub uh, 5 and V sub 5. Uh, so we get U sub 5 is U sub 3, which is minus 2. Uh, or, uh, yeah, yeah, minus 2 minus 10 times 3. That's going to be minus 32. Uh, v sub 5 is going to be V sub 3, which is 3, minus uh, 10 times minus 4, which is going to be 43. And I guess they don't write the last step, but we did one more division. Uh, it's pretty easy to see that, that 1 divides 3. So our next division, our next quotient is going to be 0. And then we're done. Once we get a, once we get a, I mean, our, our quotient is 1, our quotient is 3, but our remainder is going to be 0. Once we get a remainder of 0, we're done. So the GCD is 1, because that's the last value of R sub I we got. And now these numbers U sub I and V sub I, in this case U sub 5 and V sub 5, U sub 5 is negative 32, V sub 5 is 43. This means that our extended GCD is 1, comma 30, minus 32 comes 43. And you can check yourself that 1 is equal to minus uh, uh, eight, remember, it has to be A times U plus V times B times V. So our A was 133. I'm not going to do this arithmetic, but you can check yourself that um, 1 is equal to 133 times minus 32 plus 99 times 43. Pretty neat. So not only do you get the uh, VCD, you also get the linear combination, or at least one linear. So that's, that's one example. And uh, here's another example. I'm not going to go through some detail. There's just one more thing I want to point out about this algorithm. Not only does it give you the linear combinations, it also gives you something known as a multiplicative inverse. Uh, so what, what here, so, I mean, let's just go back to the last example. Not only did we get this linear combination, of one is equal to 133 times minus 32, plus 90 time, 99 times 43. But suppose we just wanted to know the multiplicative inverse of, uh, of 99 modulo 133. So we want to find a number such that 99, let's call it y, because this is y here. Let's find a number y such that 99y is congruent to 1 modulo 133. Well, this does it for us. We don't care about the minus 32 because our, our modulus is 133, so we don't care what multiplies 133. But we do care what multiplies 99. And you can check for yourself that 99 times 43, uh, if you take that mod 133, you get 1. Well, that, that's basically just a consequence of what I said earlier. So we just don't care about the thing that multiplies 133 because we're, we're taking the, the result module 133. So not only does uh, the extended GCD give us this nice linear combination, it also gives us a multiplicative inverse. So uh, if we just apply the same uh, method, the extended Euclidean algorithm to say uh, 75, that's our A, and 28, uh, then the, the, the second number we get out of it is going to be the multiplicative inverse, which in this case is 67. Uh, it looks like the extended GCD, the, 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 the regular GCD, I believe, is 1 in this case. And then the extended GCD, it looks like you get two combinations. Yeah, you always get two numbers at the end. Uh, what's the other one? 
it looks like it's, uh, we don't really care about that one, but it looks like it's uh, 6. Yeah, mi or minus 6. Minus 2 times 3 times 28. Yeah, so 73 times 28 minus 6 times 28. Uh, I'm getting a little confused here. Anyway, we don't care about that part. Uh, the Y is 75. So that that's the, I mean, it's 67. So it'll give you the multiplicative inverse. So just the, this is the value of Y. And then, uh, um, and then uh, the last thing I want to talk about in this video, if you watch the first video I made in this series, I talked about linear Diophantine equations. And the, the reason, one reason I'm, I'm talking about the uh, Euclidean algorithm and the extended Euclidean algorithm is that I, if, if you watch that video, I think you noticed that uh, there's two steps in this algorithm. The first one, you want to calculate just the regular GCD of A and B. And the reason you do that is you want to see whether the constant term, uh, uh, whether it's, uh, it divides a constant term. If it doesn't, then then uh, you have to, in, you know, there's no solution. The solution is the empty set. Uh, but if it does, then you actually have to compute the extended GCD later. So this is a this is an application. This is a practical application. And I'll just give you an example here. Uh, and this is actually a route written out. But suppose you wanted to calculate the, uh, suppose you wanted to solve this uh, linear Diophantine equation, 87x minus 64y equals 3. Well, this is pretty complicated. I mean, you know, it, what, one of the steps involved uh, was to uh, calculate the extended GCD of 87 and 64. This is what this calculation is all about. I'm not going to go through all of this because it's pretty complicated. But here's the answer. Turns out the regular GCD is one in this case, and then the 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 value of x turns out to be thirty four, and the value of y turns out to be minus twenty five, and so once we've got those, those are u and v. Our u is thirty four, and our v is minus twenty five. And now, since we got u and v, we can plug them in to uh, to this equation on the bottom. We already know everything else. So in this case, x is going to be u, which is 34, times c. c prime is just c since the GCD was 1. Or c was 87, I believe. Or no, uh, 3. So we have 34 times 3, which is 102. And then we have k. k is just a parameter, just an arbitrary integer. And then we have b prime, which is b in this case. That's 64. So we're going to have x equals 102 plus 64k. And y, that's going to be v, that was minus 25. So minus 25 times 3, that's going to be minus 75. And now we have minus k times uh, a, or 80, it was 87. So we're going to get y equals uh, minus 75 minus 87k. So let's see if that's the answer they got. I'm pretty sure it is. Yeah, exactly. So x of k is minus 75 minus 64k. And y of k is minus 102 minus 87k. So that gives us the answer. And uh, this, you kind of have to use the extended GCD to do it this way because the numbers we started with are so big. So anyway, that's just a practical application of the extended G, uh, Euclidean algorithm. Anyway, uh, I think that concludes my talk. Yeah, thank you for watching. Long live math, and I'll see you next time.